Oh, but let's get this show on the road. One last time. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And welcome to the Concept Crucible Podcast. And it's our episode finale. Not just our episode finale, but our podcast finale. I know. It's not. So I always, as a kid, had to double check, like, is it a series finale or a season finale? Because I always hated it when all of a sudden it's like, series finale. What? No. <laughs> and unfortunately, it's that time for us. I don't think it's that unfortunate. Like, like we are, we are ending the podcast so that we can do additional stuff and adi- and and sort of pursue additional areas creatively. There will mm-hmm. still be more podcasts, but mm-hmm. the concept crucible podcast yeah. has reached the end of its life. I think that's part of the reason why that I was a little sad about coming over to record this one, but I didn't feel really sad because I knew it wasn't actually. The end of the friendship, so to speak. It does also explain why you were an hour late. Yeah. It, yeah, no, I, I was dragging ass a little bit because I'm like, <laughs> ah, I don't want to go over. I don't want to do it because we've already wrapped up the, the cover song challenge. You know, it's time to wrap up the podcast or at least the Concept Crucible podcast. So let's break your heart a bit more. Yeah. Uh, with our icebreaker. No. Um, what is your favorite moment sort of in and around this podcast? Uh, in our pre-show, I, I commented that for most of the podcasts, I'd come in, I would re- re- we would record, and I haven't really watched a lot of the podcasts. Um, and so there's a lot of gaps in my memory in terms of what we did. So I would say the most memorable thing of the podcast is the fact that we took it internationally and we filmed two or three I think we filmed three episodes, three episodes yeah. in, in in Ted's garage and so that is the most memorable for me because you know we had a guest we were in a completely different location yeah, we're, we're like piled up on a couch on an old couch in Scotland yeah in, in effectively what was my bedroom mm-hmm. um, next to the bar which it doesn't matter for you but it mattered for me um, <laughs> and uh it was just it was such a complete departure uh, for the filming side of it running it off your laptop yep. trying to find um, uh, the um, adapters universal adapters so that we could actually record uh, and and get stuff uploaded so that for me is probably the most memorable aspect or element in and around the podcast mine um, I have two <gasps> Yeah, you um, you're hucking it. I am. So one one of them is the one I, I talked about in the pre-show, which is I we had we we had a, a pattern for our first like two years ish, mm-hmm. where it would be Monday night. Um, I would I would go home. I would order a pizza, um, and Huck would arrive about the same time the pizza did, mm-hmm. and we we would eat pizza, and do the pot and and do the pre-show. Mm-hmm. And it, we were just sort of like chill, and and the the biggest problem was like the pre show would wind up being like two and a half hours because mm-hmm. we were prepping, you know, two podcasts, yeah. and then we would we would buckle down to record, and it would be like eleven o'clock by the time we were done, which was cool, but we both had to work in the morning. Yeah, and then I had to go home and spend time with my partner. <laughs> yeah, and you have a dog to take care of, yeah. and yeah, um, so it was it was cool, but it was taxing. But I but the the pizza pre show was was. Uh, definitely sort of fun and relaxing. But the other thing I was I, I, I think of is because uh, you mentioned taking the podcast on the road and we took the podcast to Maker Expo. Yeah. Where I'm running three mics off of the soundboard, like basically live mm-hmm. um, and doing doing cuts live so I can ship them over to Rich so mm-hmm. you can put them put them online. Yeah. And there was a whole like elaborate process that we worked out and then drilled mm-hmm. so that we knew that it would work and we had backup plans and backup plans because the Wi-Fi failed that day. Yeah. And it didn't matter to like we didn't even notice because we, we, we had already been like, no, we're not using the local Wi-Fi there. We are going to tether it to somebody's phone yeah. and make sure that no matter what happens, we are up and running. Yeah. So it was a very MacGyver situation. Where, it was a good time. Yeah, we f- we figured out a lot of stuff, and it was super super cool. Yeah, I still want to go back I, back to Maker Expo. Um, we should check when they open their applications. Yeah, we missed this year. It just uh, and it didn't happen at the same time, did it? No, there's one next year. Yeah, Ma- Maker Expo 2018 is in, I believe, uh, May. Okay. 
but we'll put a link in the show notes. Mm-hmm. But because it's going to be exciting and cool no matter what. Mm-hmm. So yeah, one of the thing, one of the ways that uh, I definitely noticed a change over like we've been doing this for four years, mm-hmm. and we would be well past a hundred episodes if. Uh, we had taken the deadline sort of more seriously yeah. in year one. Yeah, I think we did, what, 19 episodes, 19. season one, 20, 24 four, in season, season two. two, and then 27 last year, and then we're set to do 27 this year. Correct. So, so. The, but there was definitely a thing where it's like, oh, we don't have time. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I guess I guess we don't have time. Yeah. Uh, and now our, our whole thing is, oh, we don't have time. Okay, let's make time. Yeah, and I, I think... The success of last year and this year really comes down to that of we took the release deadline seriously and even if it was you know hey we got a podcast that we're supposed to have up like this is say friday at work we're talking in the slack we got a podcast that's supposed to go up on monday uh oh okay uh are you free saturday yeah are you free so i know i got D on sunday okay saturday <laughs> yeah like we're, we'll we'll make time like it reminds it reminds me of when rich and i used to shoot co-op adventures at midnight yeah. we'd go midnight to two in the morning because that was when we had time and when all of the like right conditions were available mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh man yeah well i think moving to slack has really helped too like we yeah. moved to slack i think three years ago yeah that sounds about right and and we do a lot of our pre-show stuff in the slack now yeah i mean that that shift of uh going from pizza pre-show to even Slack pre-show because pre-Slack everything was done in the Google Drive. We would have yeah. a few documents set up, you know, with a brainstorm list of topics, and then we would go through and make notes, and then in the pre-show look through the documents, and be like, "What do we feel like talking about?" Okay, I think we could do this and this, and then we just go from there. Whereas in the Slack, you know, Friday, okay, what are we going to talk about? Okay, it's going to be this. It's going to, you know, part one is going to be this, part two is going to be this. it's. It's so weird but how you professionalize I, it. The, I, the, 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 the Slack used to have an automation. I think I got rid of it, but it used to have an automation where every every other Monday, like the off week, it would it would just post a little note in our channel that said, you have to put up a podcast this week. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. Because mine, I, I um, created, at least for me, and I think I shared it with you, the Wootsu calendar. Yeah, because it's got it still has uh, Mondays every other Monday earmarked for podcast filming at your old house. Yes. Yeah, it still has the address for your old house, and I'm like, ah, should I change it? I don't know. I, I don't really yeah, want to. And then after now, you know, I can delete the actual podcasting. It well, it has definitely yeah. changed. I think like like this year we shifted to you doing most of the editing for the first little bit until <laughs> until my computer died. Such is life, but. <laughs> Um, so there were, yeah, we, we refined the process to the point where it's get files, throw them in a, in an FTP, you grab them on the other end and what comes out the other side is, um, the excellent finished podcast. Yeah. And, uh, once you do it once, then you learn the hotkeys and then you just know to drop, you know, drop the raw footage in, sync things up and away you go. You just yeah. cut, cut it down until you have your, your episode. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, the other big shift has been life management. I think, mm-hmm. like, like we have we have had to refine the process because there are more demands on our on our time. Like, I'm doing more community stuff. Um, you were engaged. Yeah. Uh, and so we we can't just you know take six hours to do no you know one and a half episodes or whatever. Yeah, especially once I started teaching and whatnot, it just it got it got to the point where it's like. All right, you need to start scaling some stuff back yeah. because so was, I did not have time for friends, you know. Like that is the, 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 and I, I have kind of enjoyed that where it's it's been really tight where it's just like we we, we turn up, we we've done our prep work because I I enjoy the feeling of do, of having done my legwork. Yeah, like like I'm a person who enjoys preparation and feeling like I'm prepared. Mm-hmm. So when we turn up and I'm like okay. I'm ready to go. I've I've brainstormed like you know six things. I've got some some links, mm-hmm. set, like sort of squared away. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and our and our and our pre-show goes from you know an hour and a half to half an hour, and then we just bang out a podcast. That makes mm-hmm. me feel really good. Yeah. No, it's uh, professionalizing it really really helps. Where once once you get the the kind of nitty gritty, it was the same with the cover song thing. Once you know. The basics of how yeah, like to all capture. the pieces. Yeah, 
then you, it just it refines it into a much nicer streamlined thing. And I think that's going to help us moving forward for future projects. Is mm-hmm. that you know we we now have the basic literacy down, and so now we can focus on or uh, focus our attention on making things better quality. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, largely for me, if 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 I'm going to do anything for four years, there's no excuse not to be good at it. Yeah. <laughs> No. Right, like this. I still sometimes marvel. Like four years, uh, our show has gone through undergraduate, yeah. <laughs> or gone through high school. It's you know, good. it's some it's time for grad school. Yeah, it's it's time yeah. for grad school. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, when you think of yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I reflecting on it, I think of all the stuff that we used to do that we don't do now. Yeah. Um, all the stuff that we wanted to do that we never did. Mm-hmm. Um, I still really, I really wish I'd gotten that that set of episodes together on like all of the Ryans yeah. and all of the women who love Ryans. Yeah, and that might still happen in the future. We do. I still really want to do it, but I, I never, I never like wanted it enough that I made this. I got, I got sat down and made the scheduling work because scheduling seven adult human beings yeah. is challenging yeah uh, well and you we are on episode 97 but our, our real goal is to get 100 episodes so at some point in the future there is still space for three <laughs> bonus episodes of the concept crucible podcast so pa- patrons only patrons yeah. <laughs> and we have a patron account we might as well start using it in we that do. way yeah. um but yeah, we, we, we were gonna do companion posts on mm-hmm. Concept Crucible where where with our like afterthought mm-hmm. pieces, uh, like additional blog pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, that might be more doable now that I actually run my own blog as yeah. well. The drive toward accessibility, um, yeah, ca- like trying to caption the podcast, which is yeah. still a thing that I want to do. Yeah, but is a thing that that takes a lot of time. Yeah. And that isn't an excuse not to do it. It is merely the reason why I haven't. Yeah, if if the podcast was more scripted, then it would be so much easier because the, all the legwork would have been done ahead of time. Yeah. Um, but because like we we pre-show, we know what we want to talk about, um, and a lot of times what we talk about in the pre-show comes out almost verbatim in the actual episode, but. Yeah, it's just, it's really difficult to go back and transcribe it faithfully enough on a timely enough schedule mm-hmm. to make it worthwhile for somebody who would need it. So. Yeah. Remember when we had guests? <laughs> season two, because that was our big, that was our big move from season one to season two, right? Yeah. Was, was, uh, we we're like, we, we don't want it to just be us. We want to bring in guests. Mm-hmm. Um. And we did a bunch of, of three-person podcasts. I think more than half the episodes of season two had a guest. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of the ones in season three. A couple of, a couple of the ones in season two. Mm-hmm. But it was definitely a thing that was like taxing on my entire apartment. Because I had two roommates. <laughs> and we had to take over the living room. Yeah. In order to have guests on the podcast. There's, de- there, like, there's a bunch of, of three-person or four-person podcasts where... Uh, they someone someone comes through and there's a cut because my roommate like comes home and has to weave his way because the cables and the lights and whatnot yeah. and the table are running uh, if you go back and watch like the the podcast with uh, Gina or Kaylee or, or or Andrew my front door is about five feet to my right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, so there, there is no way to you and the and the and the door to the kitchen runs directly behind the camera. Yeah. So like, there's no way to use the apartment in any meaningful way without interacting with the podcast. Yeah, we 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 definitely used a lot of space. Oh, it was so good. Yeah. And and now we've got some more dedicated space. We've got some more room. Yeah. And part of the the thing about the guests is we wanted. Um, we wanted a diversity of opinions because mm-hmm. just you and I talking all the time can get boring. It's not as interesting as I imagine. Yeah, it's. whereas we wanted to constantly be bringing in different people so that, that we could f- filter the topic through a unique perspective. And we did really, really well for season two and pretty well for season three. And season four, what? 
two episodes, I think, counted. Yeah. There are two unique instances. Uh, wait, didn't we have one where Ted, we had a, a spare one from Scott? That's in season three. Is that the, season? Okay. Social Justice Warrior. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, I thought for some reason we had a carryover. No, into I got bad for you, brother. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we uh, we I did so. we did really poorly for for scheduling. But it, again, it came down to you and I had such a time or such a crunch on our times trying to get other people with flexible enough schedules to then come in and be like, oh, by the way, we're gonna airdrop you in because we have time Saturday. Yeah. It just well, that was how work. that was how uh, Ryan Walsh wound up in. Uh, um, transformative video games, mm. right? Was it was we did airdrop him in because he lived across the street. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it really it really helps when you when you have super flexible people. But when our our schedule became less predictable, it it deviated from Monday nights into whenever we could fit it in. And so yeah, we lost we lost the guest posts. So yeah. which I I hope to rekindle in future projects. Yeah. Mm. One of the things I reflected on, though, is, um, and this is, I guess this is a reflection on the podcast as a whole, is the nature of presenting to the camera or being on to the camera yep. versus the conversations that went into the podcast. So either the conversations that led to the creation of the podcast or the conversations that we would have outside of filming. So either pre-show or... Just like the Power Rangers conversation that was never <laughs> recorded, we, we talked for like an hour after after shooting. I'll, I'll link it in the show. It's the little the little short little Power Rangers vlogs. So we went and saw the Power Rangers movie yeah. together because we both have like strong Power Rangers based feelings. Yeah, and we talked for like an hour and and we looked at each other at like as as it's like one in the morning and I'm like I just got to get out of this car and go home and go to bed and he's like. We should have really recorded that. We should have. We had... Damn it. There were so many good ideas that you and I had about... Like, we respected what the movie was, but we had just these tiny little tweaks that we it thought just, would make things a little bit more it, compelling. It just would have been really... It, like, it yeah. would have been really fun. Yeah. Um, and, I think, and I think that that comes from, like, when I'm on camera, I'm always thinking about, like, where my body is and where my hands are mm. and uh, things like that. Um, like every time I get a drink of water, I'm like listening. I'm listening to the rest of my house. Mm -hmm. You can hear every once in a while one of my brick feet roommates <laughs> um, going down the stairs that are on the other side of this wall. Yeah, you're essentially um, star, director, and producer if you want to split out those two roles. So I don't know how you know really super talented actors or actresses who also direct while, while starring in a film. I don't know how they do it because I guess when you have a a giant complement of people running everything else and <laughs> it, would, it would be a little bit easier if we had somebody behind the camera handling everything else like placement or whatnot but one day we're gonna enter yeah well we can just steal what some of the other youtubers and we can just pretend to have somebody you know <laughs> marco did you get that all right make sure to put it in post yeah maybe we should no. do that for the next project no, but it sounds terrible <laughs> but so the whole concept crucible podcast started up because Jim and I would meet in the Walper Hotel's restaurant down in the basement. Yep. And um, we would have these wonderful dinner conversations. And I wasn't then... a vegetarian then. I would eat chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, so we would meet and have these wonderful conversations. And then I was it me who suggested, like, man, we should really just record a podcast because these are so interesting. Yeah. Because uh, I had run, previous to that, I had run the Educated Imagination podcast, yeah. which now... Um, thanks to a bunch of internet kerfuffles that like, literally no longer exists. Really? Yeah, the episodes are all gone. Oh no! I um, yeah, I remember checking those out when but, we started. Uh, and I had done I had done a bunch of video stuff. Like I I had started my YouTube channel and I had done a bunch of things. And and Kaylee and I I think had just like a few months before had our first couple of Wootsu Riot conversations, and we were just getting into that realm of of. The idea that yeah, like we we want to make things, we want to make music and content and videos, and 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 it is hard to do it by yourself, mm -hmm. and it is better to do it together. And so you you pitched this podcast idea to me, and I was just like, I have a notepad, and I have a page in my notebook that's already full of stuff like this. <laughs> and 
it was like, what if, what if we did do that? What if we had the tools? Because we do. Mm-hmm. Because you can just do it. <laughs> no. So that, but uh, I, I, I'm super long winded as always. Uh, coming back to the to the main point of uh, why I bring this up is, if if I had to reflect on one thing that I'm disappointed about with the podcast is when you're on camera or you know you're being recorded you behave differently yeah and i feel like our conversations outside of the the podcast sometimes were far richer than anything we could have captured like don't get me wrong there are lots of podcast episodes that i'm incredibly proud of uh actually the majority of them i i I stand by all of them um but i feel like sometimes we had these wonderful conversations that in a in a safer environment where we're not being recorded, where nobody's going to judge us for what we're saying, except we perhaps judge each other because we can be like that. Mm. Um, you know, you feel safe to talk, uh, to say things and throw ideas out there without worrying about sounding smart or being right or something. How many times we we throw something out and be like, no, that's, that doesn't sound right. Let me walk that back for a second and restate it. And it would become yeah. so much stronger as a result. Um, and so I wish the podcast could have captured some of, some of that magic. I'm just going to call it magic because that's what it feels like. Um, but as a product or as an outcome, the podcast itself, I think we did well for four years and, yeah, you know, it's been good two, time. two, three bedrooms, <laughs> my living room for yeah, the living, ethics, uh, living room for the end of season one. Yeah. Um, yeah, the tiny, the tiny, I remember, and I think we talked about this in the maker, the post maker expo episode mm-hmm. where, where when we applied to maker expo, they were like, well, listen, guys, you're only going to get like um, like a, a, an 8x8 eight eight booth space mm-hmm. for this whole thing you want to do. You're going to need like an engineering table and like an interview area and stuff like that. And we were like, 8x8? Eight eight? We've never had so much space! We need a we need a two foot by two foot space for the laptop. Our, and that's about it. <laughs> our yeah, like our, our recording space in my in my room was in my bedroom, mm-hmm. and it was like two feet by four feet mm-hmm. because that was when we started running into like my bed mm-hmm. and my computer desk and my guitar rack, mm-hmm. and it's just like we're and we're jammed in and we couldn't go any farther because we were up against the door. Yeah, and. <laughs> It was just... Well, that's part of the reason for Art Wall, right? Is to give it a sense of space and depth and not show us being crammed. We could do it in a smaller space if we had a different lens, like a a lens that allowed for a distorted wide angle. We could do it in a a smaller physical space, but... But it would not be comfortable. It would not be comfortable. It was not comfortable in there. It got got real warm. (laughs) Yeah. Oh man, that's part of the reason why I always had water. Was was I was uh, getting parched from just cooking under the lights. Yeah. So the brave new future. There was mm-hmm. a, so this is ending. Yep. Uh, and new things are starting. Mm-hmm. Um, and the 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 new thing is starting. So and it's worth telling the story of this. I think it was the first or second episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we we'd never brainstormed a close out. We didn't know what we were doing. We're still learning sort of anything Mm -hmm. and you said stay awesome yeah and that became the mainstay for our whole thing yeah right i I was you have signed off or one of us has signed off with almost or from almost every one of these podcasts except for the ones where you don't do it and then i get mad at you for not doing it or i crib somebody else's sign yeah (laughs) um with with stay awesome yeah I am one of those people that, that overuses the word awesome. Uh, and I remember being self-conscious of it. I was a leader of a team for a community thing that we were, I was a part of. It was just, you know, uh, I think it was the Engage team. And we were doing a, a case study, and I was the kind of elected the leader. Uh, and I would always be like, yeah, man, you're doing an awesome job. Or, you know, this report's really awesome. Because it was my go-to word to try to praise <laughs> so, somebody. So as a trustee on our local Awesome Foundation, let me tell you that you don't know the first thing about overusing the word awesome. Fair. In a pre-show, <laughs> I think for one of the last podcasts that we we recorded, we definitely talked about the overuse of awesome and how it's... Yeah, and, and, and I've got some, some, some thoughts on that that I, that I want to yeah. put into some new stuff. Because that's the name of our new project, to stay awesome. Yeah. Is predicated on the idea that you already started super rad, mm-hmm. and 
Um, this is how we're going to do sh- um, shorter vlogs about how we stay awesome. Yeah. And, and some of the sort of pieces, the moving parts of that. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of open... There's a, there's a lot more open-ended stuff to that. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of room for us to to not have to spend 40 minutes talking about a thing. <laughs> Rambling. Uh, talking about two or three different ideas that you have you haven't quite yeah but in, 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 instead instead to to yeah. to do like much shorter much tighter much more energetic and explosive videos yeah i think you said uh i think you said it best that if the podcast has been a um a little bit of a development project for us about so it chronicles our relationship yeah but it also like a lot of our episodes we're talking about self-development personal development self-improvement so if that's what the concept crucible was it was essentially putting all these ideas into the crucible firing it up and seeing what comes out on the other side this is where it's like okay we are good we are you know awesome so now let's let's keep the momentum going forward yeah and 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 i think that that is largely true of everyone like like the the notion that uh to to spoil the notion of stay awesome it is it is lots of self-improvement um sort of starts at the idea of of I'm at the bottom and I need to climb mm-hmm. and it's but but it is I think a more interesting approach to say I'm at the top and I need to stay here mm-hmm. you know I have reached the top of the mountain and it is time to learn to fly mm-hmm. and so that's what we're going to talk about we there is going to be a new podcast no. Um, we're going to set it to launch uh, sometime in February, mm-hmm. uh, but it's going to be monthly, mm-hmm. and it's going to be different. It's Instead of it being 40, 30, 40 minutes of, of sort of back and forth, we're going to do a more segmented mm-hmm. um, element. We're still experimenting, so it's much like the first episode, so I'm excited for the rough bits <laughs> and to, to, to smooth those out. You could give it a, a shake out and see, see where everything settles. But the goal, the goal is to be more focused. Mm-hmm. I mean, in addition to that, um, both of us have made a commitment to start pushing to art press more regularly. Yep. Um, which is our our um, non fitness fitness vlog, mm-hmm. which is thirty second, thirty second <laughs> Ryan <laughs> two minutes <laughs> um, vlog shot from our, our phones, yeah. like before or after workouts, sort of focused on the idea of of when you make stuff. Your body is your instrument. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I had it when I, I, I did a four-hour set at an art show, and I finished up and like my knees hurt. I'm like, why do my knees hurt? And I was like, the answer is because I don't take care of myself. You know, it's I, I've um, Drew the the blue nurse who's been on a couple of times. Like he trains, mm-hmm. he trains hard because his job is really physically demanding, and yeah. all he does like ninety like percent of what he does is twist balloons all day. Yeah, but on stilts that actually on deeply undersells what he does. Yeah, I was but, gonna say on stilts on fire, you know, hanging upside down from a roller coaster. Yeah, but but <laughs> you know, it's that it's that kind of thing, and so so how we maintain our bodies I mean they have to last us for the rest of our lives at least until we get into some kind of cool ass cyber future mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and how so how we look after them is really important and I think that that there's an opportunity for our press to sort of illustrate how different people do that mm-hmm. and we're all I'm already looking into um, getting some additional contributors to that mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's not so much demand on one person. Like, cause right right now, let, let's be honest, the most consistent person is probably Drew, and then kind of you and I are somewhere tied. Yeah, it's it's been a thing that's been sort of start and stop for uh, yeah. for a while, which I I like because it reflects the nature of fitness. Is yeah. that like fitness is a a it, it is it isn't a thing that you pick pick up and put down. It is a thing that you use to change your life. Yeah. Um, but that often involves a process of readoption and forgiveness. Yeah, tricking yourself into working. <laughs> yeah, there is there there are definitely some other things coming down the pipe that we're not going to announce the announcement of yet. Mm-hmm. But that is that is sort of where that's going to start. Yeah, and I am excited to see where it takes us because this has already taken us very far. Yeah, it's I don't even. I, 
I have a hard time remembering what it was like when we started. I, maybe I'll just have to go back and rewatch it and See, try to get it. back go, in the go, headspace. Go, go back and watch episode one. Yeah. Go. I I, I recommend. I, I did it recently. Go back and watch episode one. You'll be like, oh, who are those fucking people? Yeah. And the camera looks like it's up there yeah. looking down on us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the halcyon days of yep. 2013, 2012, yeah. 2013. Anyway, for the last time, um, you can find us on Twitter, on Instagram. Um, we're at uh, at Wootsuit on Twitter and mm-hmm. Wootsuit Riot on Instagram. You can find us on Patreon at mm-hmm. the Patreon link below. Uh, if you want to support, uh, well, not this, but all of our new endeavors as well as our streams, which happen every uh, Thursday and Sunday mm-hmm. uh, on Twitch.tv slash Wootsuit Riot. And our individual websites, everything, all linked down below. Yeah. Uh, if you want to heckle us individually, you can do that uh, on Twitter. Um, and yeah, for the for the final time uh, for the Concept Crucible podcast, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay awesome. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you podcast a podcast, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>